What's up YouTube? 2006 Mitsubishi Eclipse. This is my own car. Thought I'd do a video while I'm out of work on this uh, leave that I'm on for surgery. Um, my check engine light is off as of now. That's because I reset it. Just to see what codes would come back. I had catalytic converter codes. Go figure. They would come as soon as my emissions is due. But I don't have to be back at work for a couple more weeks. So I'm going to show you how I would test these cats. And for y'all to test these cats. And you can do this with just a basic scanner. But just make sure if it's a basic scanner it has graphing mode. It's a lot easier to tell by reading the uh, graphing pattern that your cats are dead. So I already know mine are. But I'm going to show you how to do this. Anyways, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, you know the deal. Please subscribe. So I continue to make videos like this to make y'all's life easier. Y'all have a good day. Let's do this. All right. First, I'm going to go to just generic OBD2. Let it load up. I already know this check engine light is going to come back on. It's already found two codes. Let's erase the previous data. We're going to read them codes. Ah, uh, look. 421 and 431 both cats on this model both cats are built into the manifold so you have to replace the whole entire exhaust manifold on this model you can get them on amazon for a couple hundred dollars and they're pretty easy to replace so i'll just wait till i get back to work to do that anyways i'm going to show you how i would test these and how you can test these just to make sure even though i know they're bad i'm going to show you how to test if they're bad let's go to live data This is the um, home edition video. Notice I'm wearing my jewelry. I ain't wearing that at work. I'd be getting caught all up in engines and getting my hand ripped off. So let's view data. Yeah, don't ever wear any kind of jewelry or anything like that when you're working on cars, man. Let's see, go to view data. Now, depending on what scanner you have, this is gonna be a little bit different. I got this one on Amazon for I think like a hundred bucks, but it, it's a multimeter too, full function multimeter, and a scan tool, and a battery tester for a hundred dollars. I mean, three tools in one can't be that, and it does live data. So this is telling me how to select it. So we're just gonna select the downstream O2 sensors because that's all we're focused on. That shows none none of that long term, short term crap. Just go down to. O2, one of one, O2, one of two. You want to select your downstream sensors. Oh. No. Hold on. Let's see. Select that one. All right, now we're going to go to one of O2 sensor, bank two sensor one, O2 sensor, bank two sensor two. Okay, both downstream sensors. I can already see by looking at the numbers. See how fast they're switching? I mean, those should be staying pretty flat line. Not like dead flat line, but I mean, they're moving as fast as an upstream would. Which, those cats are completely dead, so. Any rate, let's uh, view the data on that bad boy. I'm just going to select one of them. No need to select them both. You see how the pattern's going up and down, 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 up and down. Yeah, that would, it's acting just like an upstream sensor. You should be relatively flat line unless you rev it, like I'm doing right now, and then it's going to spike, just indicating fuel control. And then once it settles down, it's going to start doing its same thing. Up and down, up and down. There's nothing left of the cat. It's completely bypassing any media that's not left in the cat. So that's how you would see it. That line should be pretty flat line. Little fluctuation. When you rev it, it's going to spike and then come back down. But it should not be doing that up and down squiggly like AC waveform looking signal. Let's see if I can show you something else just for 
back all the way out of this. Let's go to custom data list again. Okay. So let's go to this is one of the upstreams, and I'll show you. O2 sensor one of one. That's your upstreams. Now they're supposed to go up and down like that. Rich lean, rich lean. That's normal. Let me move this cord out of my way. Because I want to cooperate. See how that one's doing it? Well, that's okay because that's normal. So we're going to hit okay. See? See how uh, the downstream was acting like that upstream? Yeah, so we know 100% I need catalytic converters, even though I already knew that. I'm just showing you how to check for that before you go spending a ton of money because you could just need a downstream oxygen sensor, but the oxygen sensor is doing its job. If the oxygen sensor was dead, it'd be at a fixed voltage and not moving at all. So I hope that was uh, informative. A little rusty. I haven't done a video in a minute. So I'll be back at it in a few weeks. Y'all back to work. So when I get back, we're going to continue on with this uh, channel that is growing slower than I would like, but being out of work ain't helping as well. So I thought I'd do a home edition video for y'all today. Anyways, y'all know the deal. Subscribe. Y'all have a good day. Check like. Peace out, YouTube.